Uh, you all have made the trek from Deep Rock Port. So there were two options. You could have just gone straight to Deep Rock, which is the main city of uh, Virgoan territory. And that would have been by train. And so it would have been like a, think of like a triangle. So Deep Rock would have been one direction. And like the hypotenuse is you guys going to Hildenborough, which is right outside the Virgoan tree. And I updated a little bit the Gaian world map so we can just look at it. Quack. Just to give you a better visual idea. However, this Manticore was kind of like a, uh, a fun side quest event for you all. You understood that uh, Dr. Elric had essentially tasked you with bringing back some parts and pieces of it. To which you humbly obliged and Laszlo himself uh, was successful in retrieving a lot of the alchemical properties. He actually rolled really high. Uh, as well as the head, which you understand is used to get the bounty. So you're basically your proof of defeating the Manticore is the head, which you are currently holding um, on to. And what's up? Oh, for even funnier roleplay on that, Alonzo didn't even realize that he was just doing it because he was mad and he was going to show it in the doctor's face. It's, 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 it just, it's <laughs> just like coincidence. It also happens to be for the bounty. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like everybody else is like, good job. Which... Yeah, we needed that. And I'm like, what? Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, I thought that was the only thing you were thinking of. So it's funny that you you bring it up. Um, but a manticore. How much do you guys think a manticore weighs? Its head or the manticore itself? Yeah, just the head. A ton. A... I mean, oh, uh, head? if it's a I mean, large the creature, just, is the the heads of a uh, of a like your family friend, right? So it's just like a human sized head. <laughs> I guess. Ooh, this is pretty. Ooh. And you guys, you nice. should be able to zoom out and see the whole map. Oh, yeah, yeah my dude. Heck this is yeah. updated since the last time we saw Yeah, I added a lot more identifiers. And not every name yeah. is set in stone, but it gives you a good idea of, like, uh, locations. Nice. Oh, this is the tits. The man tits. Oh, is that, is that your music? Yeah. It's... What was that? I don't have any music playing like right It's not like a trumpet. What's going on? There's a creature in the, in the distance. I'd be in my, my real world. Yeah, what the fuck's happening? I'm a little scared. We should go to Coquina next. Oh, I agree. For that good 69 action. Hey. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the icon you mean? That's funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's what they're known for. That's what they're known for. So, uh, just to give you an idea, let me just move Kai real quick. That's where you arrived, is that deep rock port, that cave in the side of the mountain where there's like a, a bridge, like a tower built into the side. Uh, you do notice that there's a ramp that goes up from the clouds, so you can tell that there's like an incline. So, for example, you could dis technically descend into the cloud sea, uh, see how deep it goes, but for the most part, like all the airships dock there, and there is a train that links like a triangle to Deep Rock, and Deep Rock itself, and this is something Alonzo would have shared with you, has its own train port that go to the other Earthen cities. So you could go to the Capricorn or Taurus, uh, and that's just like a, a specific so kind of alliance. That's that Hildenborough. That is Hildenborough. It's right across from okay. the tree, and the only this thing separating. Yes, exactly. What Alan is currently pointing at. So, Papa, yeah, over here. Deep Rock. Yeah, big city. <laughs> uh, so, like, half the city of Deep Rock is above ground, and that's more or less like the farming. Uh, you can tell that there's, there's like a lot of wheat fields. That's like their main product. And then to the south, Hildenborough, it's well known for baked goods as well as its Rangers Guild, which is where you learned your techniques in order to, you know, set the foundation for your uh, archery skills. And I see. Yeah, they're, the only thing separating Hildenborough from the Gaian tree is the giant aquifer freeway. I think I'm just going to call it the aquifer-way, just so it's easier yeah. to say. Aquifer-way. Aquifer-way. <laughs> uh, we so, traverse it? Yes, you can. And we'll uh, get into it as we get closer. So, back to our airship cave. Well, that's just the name of the map. Uh... But where you where you killed the manticore, the head itself, I will say, is fifty pounds. So who would like to carry a fifty pound manticore head? Do we have that uh, bag of holding yet? Laszlo, yeah, should have a bag. So the bag <laughs> of holding, it's kind of small. 
and this this is actually something I was uh, supposed to investigate research on my own time. But a bag of holding, I think only things that can fit in the opening itself can go through it. Mm. Um, yeah, it's like two feet, I think, a two-foot circle two or something. Feet. Yeah, roughly two feet mm. in diameter. Which is, yeah. yeah, that's pretty big. That's decent. So, I think, a, I think uh, the mentor head at least could fit in there. I know, like maybe larger things that like some parties get away with shoving into a, a bag, you know. But I think a manticore head could could fit in there. But do we have a, do we have a way to preserve it? Do we have any uh, anybody that can uh, pres do we have any way to preserve this head so that as we're transporting, doesn't rot and get a kind of nasty? I, I don't think things in the bag of holding will necessarily get damaged, but uh, I think it could be a little yeah, nasty when we go to pull it out. Yeah. yeah. Well, how long how long do we have to go? Well, I mean, I might have something in my bag of tricks. And he pulls out his alchemical supplies. Nope, never mind. <laughs> Good show. I Good have any salt. Mm. Well, no I have salt. Salt. No salt. We can make the trip. Just somebody has uh, to well, carry it. I mean, it... yeah, I imagine if we have a day's worth of travel, then we should be okay. But I, I mean, I, I'm not carrying much. All right. Well, uh, I mean, yes, yeah, we uh... probably fashion sort of uh, use some of my rope okay you think yeah. you're gonna um, I'll take some hemp and rope <laughs> and 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 kind of make some like ghetto uh, straps and kind of <laughs> tie it around like and uh, make make kind of sling it over my back nice. okay nice uh, go ahead and make a overall strength check or yeah strength check we'll say strength okay. more or less like finding that right position to be carrying it uh ooh. So somebody else should help him. Does anybody <laughs> want to volunteer? I'll, I'll assist. <laughs> okay, you'll assist. So Kai, go ahead and make uh a relative check for this would probably be um yeah, I'll just say strength check. We'll just keep it even. Okay. And this is you kind of like maneuvering it onto his back, his shoulders, to where it's a good position for him to be carrying it for another, you know, two to four hours. It took you more or less two to four hours to get here, and then basically the, the remainder of the way. And so, yeah, Kai has a, he has a good uh, method of carrying large amounts of weight. And so he shows you the ropes, pun intended, and uh. you... <laughs> And you you successfully get it on your back. Go ahead and uh, let me just look in your inventory. Yeah, no problem. Uh, can I use like 10, 10 feet of rope? Yeah. Um, and yeah, it is going to get damaged, bloodied. Uh, so yeah, just go ahead and deduct it. Okay. So I have 40 feet remaining. Okay. So everybody roll a perception check. Because this is... Hmm. I'm gonna roll oh, that's to see. persuasion. I also updated some of your dice. If you don't like them, feel free to uh, change it up. I like mine. Mine is cool. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from the cover of night, you overall don't have too many problems getting to uh, Hildenboro. However, your DM rolled a twenty, so we're gonna have a random encounter. Oh <clears throat> shit! <laughs> uh, I actually this is like the one thing I didn't prepare for. <laughs> so, oh shit! Yeah, we're gonna yeah, do it. it. Yeah, we're gonna the do it. Springs back to life. Ooh, Ooh, throw a the head. map down. We're we're gonna use the same map, and then it'll just give you space to work with, pretty much. Nice. I was okay. I'd Should like we go out of the cave? Yeah, I moved everybody. I was so excited to talk with Bruce about my sailor's knots that I showed him in helping him tie that up that I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, these things happen. We're good knots. Uh, let's see. And then Bruce's He's character. Like oh, there you are. Okay. So give me one second. I just want to roll to see what you encounter. Actually, hmm, who rolled the highest out of the perception checks? Looks like Salvatore. Salvatore. Roll a D100 for us. D hundred. Yep. Oh, I didn't mean to do two. <laughs> yes, you just spawn two creatures. Fifty-five. Oh, that's <laughs> that might be fun. 
Okay. We're gonna die. <laughs> uh, I just want to so check its challenge rating before I murder you guys. Uh, <laughs> Please. And you notice that Laszlo and Milo kind of lag behind, so they're not going to be participating in this combat. Laszlo, protect Milo. <laughs> uh, mm, what? sure? Oh. Uh, yeah, not Alonzo, Laszlo. <laughs> <laughs> We did not take a long rest, correct? You took a short mm -hmm. rest. Yeah. Um, I forget what you said at the end of last session about um, what do you like to do for new spell slots? Do we get the new ones that we got on level up or not until we He rest? said that He said that if we gained a spell slot, that we get that one spell slot, but we don't get any others back. Mm -hmm. Right, so not a total refresh, but just the new one. Yes. Correct. Okay. You also have something called natural recovery. If you'd like to link that for us, I know you do get something back on short rest. Yeah. Find that. Is that a new druid thing from Tasha's? No, it's um sub a land druid thing. Ah, oh, nice. Sea land. <laughs> yeah, my my sea land. The land druid. I I think this is kind of like a little bit more. So this is like a wizard. Cool. Yeah, it's it's the more spell focused one. So I get extra spells, and then I get like a little bit of this like wizard like ability. Cool. So as you all are just kind of like trekking along through this earthquake like terrain, and as you recall, it's very jagged. Uh, I will say that for the purpose of combat, it's going to be difficult terrain. Some of you, you know, are going to have easier time than others, like i.e. range classes or athletes. But overall, all of your movement is going to be halved. And as you all are just minding your own business, going through these very tight curves, like almost like 90 degree angles, a uh, very jagged route that you're taking. Uh, Milo in the back, you note that Alonzo is taking the lead. Uh, go ahead and make your marching order, but Alonzo, I will say you are in the lead at the moment. Okay. We took a short, yeah? Yes. Uh, I was, okay. I will uh, admit that I was fixing things and testing like Health pool and stuff. So, Bruce, you were, I think you were at full health. So, don't worry about that. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. I'll put all of you at full health because I, I didn't record what your uh, health were before I started adjusting things. Ow. Reinvigorated. <laughs> you hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm giving, and giving myself back one spell slot, just so you know. Okay, great. And that's from your uh, natural recovery. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, oh, so new hunter's mark. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Looks like hopefully wow. get you back in the character. However, just kind of like cresting over the trail path. You all are more or less like in this pit, this jagged trail path that's beaten into the road itself because so many people have used it. It's more or less like five feet tall. So those of you that are above five feet, you notice that there is a hulking figure kind of like making its way down the trail, and it's literally like carving into it. What you see before you is, uh, well, Alonzo, you're too short to see it, so I can't let you make a perception check. So everybody else make a perception check with disadvantage. Oh. <laughs> Just for funsies. Uh, disadvantage. I, I wouldn't hear it. it okay, you can make it with disadvantage, too. I think that makes sense. Cool. Got an eight. <clears throat> all right 10 10 10 12 12 yeah um however salvatore you acknowledge that this is uh an elemental first and foremost and it is elemental. a Ver a vergoan golem that is now kind of like moving through the path kind of like using it to sustain itself it's like pulling out like these oars that carve out like it literally literally stops in the middle of the path picks up stuff, eats it, and it's like such a hard munching sound, like concrete on concrete, like almost like chalk, like nails on a chalkboard type sounds. It's very easy to, uh, you know, see it coming, hear it coming for that part, but just understanding what it is, only Salvatore kind of like has the drop on that. So it is a golem. 
and it spots you. It's roughly 40 feet away at this point, because it's a tight, tight type of uh, pathway. So everybody go ahead and roll initiative. Ooh. My friends, it's one of the most evil of the evil. <laughs> Oh jeez! <laughs> this mana core really wants to see yeah. the head comes back to life and grows in size. I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, and then the golem he'll roll. We're at the top, Alonzo. You get the the vague sense of something in the path before you. It's still very big. What do you want to do? Um, so I'm not able to see it yet. No, but you can hear it, and your senses are attuned. Okay. To that. Um, hmm. and how ha how tall are the walls around us? The walls are five feet tall at the moment, but they vary in size. Okay, um, I'd like to scramble to go up the wall. Try to climb okay. up the side. Uh, yeah, with with your abilities and the fact that you grew up in this area, no check required. Oh, okay, cool. But it is difficult terrain, so it'd be maybe ten feet of my movement to get up there? Yeah, just we'll say so. Feet? Okay. Yes. Okay, so I've got, um... I've got five left because I've got 15 left. We're in difficult <laughs> terrain. All right. So um, do I see the golem now getting on the, the higher terrain? Oh, yes, you do. He is like a hulking seven to eight feet. He's definitely like a a, a younger golem, so to speak. Okay. 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 Sorry, I'm just trying to... I'm, I'm, I'm looking up because I'm imagining right now how I want to play the planar warrior, my new, my new feature. Sure. Um, all right. So... All right. So as I uh, as I see the golem, I kind of like, oh, that's a big one, and I like give like a little tap of my foot, and as I tap a third time, uh, a little bit of like dust kind of like starts to trail towards the golem, and it mm. starts to kind of um, get around him. It kind of like marks him, kind of gives a, it's a, it's a little bit of a uh, a shimmer. Like it, as the dust like hits him, it doesn't like cover him with dust, like but his body like starts to kind of like shimmer, almost like it's kind of like shifting in between planes. Um, so I'm gonna use that as my bonus action for the turn to mark him. Um, if it hits, I guess that'll be the damage for it. Mm -hmm. And longbow. Does nineteen hit? Yes, it does. So now the right. planner warrior does that. Uh, does everybody see that? That's my question. Or only you? The... That's a. I'll let you decide that. That's that. I'll say is is everybody sees it because instead of it being like a mark for me to do extra damage, is like it's something that like I'm drawing on the planner energy around me. Okay. And it just causes it causes like the it causes the damage that hits him to be force. Like it's not mm -hmm. all like the arrow and all, all eleven damage is force damage. Yeah. So having kind of like a powwow with yourself earlier in the day, you understand <laughs> that the Terran plane is there for not only elementals but rangers. You know the the people that bind both earth elemental fey and everything alike. You can. T you can tap into that energy. And this being one of the first times that you've truly felt mastery over such a connection. You kind of like tap on the ground, uh, the earth itself, you watch as like this trail just leads straight up to the golem and the golem vibrates just for a split second before its head just shifts in your direction. Your arrow lets loose, hitting it in the head uh, for, yeah, force damage, 11 points, no problems. Is that your turn? Nice. My turn. Okay. And Bruce, it's now your turn. What would you like to do? Okay, so just to visualize, it's a five-foot mm -hmm. path, high walls on each side, right? Yes. Okay. I would like to try to also climb up uh, to get up on the opposite side that uh, Alonzo was on. Yeah, for sure. So it's definitely, okay. at this point, just to like help, uh, it's a straight path to the golem. Like, I'm not going to say you have to zigzag to him. But yeah, straight path. Okay. There's basically a giant opening. He's heading your direction. Uh, we'll say Alonzo went on, up onto the right side. You're now on the left side. Okay, cool. So I'll get up there, and then I want to... Is there like a rock or just some sort of marker? Because I want to put the head down. <laughs> Yeah, you basically wedge it into the wall as you're climbing up, and you even use it as leverage to pull yourself straight up and out of that pit. Okay. Um, and is this, like, on the map, is this correct distance? Uh, yeah, we'll say this is the correct distance, yes. Just trying to see. Yeah. Okay, so... 25, so I have 40 feet of movement, so yeah, I'd like to get, like... I'm basically trying to sneak to get behind him 
without mm -hmm. him noticing while he's like down in the little crevasse. Okay, uh, go ahead and make an acrobatics or athletics check because I now notice that athlete doesn't give you any difficult terrain advantages. But I will say that you're no, kind of like jumping. Fine. You're like jumping from rock to rock. Okay. Uh, athletics or acrobatics. Let's do acrobatics. Oh, shit. Uh, for the most part, you yeah, you make it to him. However, you didn't go that far. You're kind of like right in front of him, just like on the side. More or less, like you're still taller than him at this point. He's inside the groove of the pathway. And so right now you're about to punch him straight in the, the face. If you'd like, that's up to you. Does he see me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, shit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fuck it. I'll give him the people's elbow. I'll jump back down into the into the the crevasse. <laughs> okay, you can stay up there and still hit them, or you can jump in the down in there. I mean, if he already saw me, like, there's no point. So okay, sounds I'll, good. Uh, yeah, I was trying to be sneaks. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll uh, drop the elbow. Fifteen to hit. Uh, yeah, that hits just barely. S Sick. Crack it into him. All right, then we will spend a key point. Let's do some flurry of blows. Oh shit! <laughs> uh, oh, I'm just doing it. Okay, oh, yep. got it. Yeah, I'm just two on arm strikes. Mm -hmm. That's one. That's uh, two. Thirteen misses, unfortunately, uh, but eighteen does hit. So it's uh, basically a full combo that you went for, but only two of them hit, landing straight in his face, his noggin, just cracking it open. Kaskow! Anything else? That's, that's all I got. That's uh, it. Yeah, unfortunately, though, you notice that you're basically punching a brick wall, so your your bludgeoning attacks just aren't doing as much as you'd like. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> uh, Salvatore is elemental. Ooh. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Think you're next. Yeah, I, was thinking, I think he might be a golem. Yeah. Like first, right? So the golem kind of just, like, arcs its head... From it was first looking at Alonzo, who had like marked it, and it mm -hmm. felt like this tremor sense, this vibration resounded through its body. But then it watches as this masked figure <laughs> comes up, elbows it, and then just <laughs> does a couple kicks in its face. And so now turning towards you, it's going to multi attack slam you. Gadunk, gadunk. Oof. Oof. Oh my god. <laughs> 27 uh, oh so oh, no. are you are you dropped how about that question you are dropped aren't you uh let me just say i didn't adjust the the challenge rating as much as i should have so <laughs> no. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, honestly, th this is supposed to be a clay golem, which is uh, yeah. challenge rating six, and I bumped it down. Uh, so, Woo! we'll say you're at one health, though, just for the fun of it. You're kind of like woozy Sick. now. What's, what's, yeah. that, what's that saving throw? The saving throw, however, is... Uh, ooh, go ahead and make that constitution save. Wait, who is this attacking? For you. Oh shit, okay, my bad. Nice. Yeah, no problems asked. But you do get this full lung, like your lungs are filled with this dust, and you just let out a <laughs> and it just all vacates. Yeah. But you're currently very <sighs> bloodied. Yeah, a tour. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> no shit. He rolled high on those too. He did. Yeah, really. I mean, high. not really. Kinda. Whoop. Oh, I took the hell. Uh, yeah, I know I took the po hit points off me on accident. I got it back. Salvatore, what would you like to do? Ooh. Um. Would this be difficult terrain for me to get to him? It is. I have to climb out of the crevasse. You don't have to climb out of the crevasse, but to sprint to him, uh, you could it, tell you what you can use your feline agility and you'd be able to make it to him. But you would be down in the ground, right next to him. Hmm. Is Lazlo part of this fight? Nope. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Mm. I'm gonna see my friend get bludgeoned by this rock beast, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. think better of it. And I'm just think going to. Think better of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna climb up the wall to be on top of the crevasse. 
<laughs> and then I'm going to use my uh, my light crossbow with my new Rite of Storm ability. Ooh. Okay. And so I pull up my crossbow, and then I, uh, I brush the tip of the arrow, and static electricity starts forming around the uh, arrow <laughs> or the crossbow bolt tip. Yep. And as you know, as a blood hunter, you do take that initial damage the very first time you apply the right. So it's basically you're pricking the arrow and you watch as your blood starts to seep down the arrow and then it just sparks to life. Lightning starts arcing off of the, the liquid pool of your blood. Uh, and yes, go ahead and fire away. It's also doing one extra point of lightning damage and one to you. Okay. That's sick. Yeah, 21 to hit, 11 piercing damage, plus an extra 1 lightning damage on top. You watch as the arrow sinks straight into it. You have a very clear shot, no problem. But the bolt itself, it just kind of like cracks against its skin, not doing as much damage as you'd like. Mm -mm. And that's your turn? You're just going to stay there as your friend dies? Yeah, I think Okay. Oh, I, just... <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to rescue him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Kai, what would you like to do? All right. Um, I am going to chant to myself in Primordial, which sounds like to you guys just the spray of water and cast Misty Step. Ooh. Hell yeah. To get closer. Nice. So I just cool. move myself where I want to go. Yeah, go ahead. In, in, instead of worrying about uh, all that other stuff. Okay, and then I'm going to use my bonus action to cast Healing Word on Bruce, who does not look so great. Yeah. So, unfortunately, I hate to burst your bubble, pun intended, but Misty Step and Healing Word are both bonus actions, so you cannot do both. Oh, that's right. Then, can I say that I went up right next to him so that I can cast Resistance on him? Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, uh, I... What were you so yeah, yeah, your Resistance, what? I remember, comes from... Resistance is a cantrip, oh, my, but it, yeah, it comes oh. from his runestone. So I touch my runestone, and then I touch you. <laughs> is that you, you got this, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> How encouraging! Yeah. Don't do you? Uh, can you go ahead and link that for us, or at least try to? If not, I can. Yeah, I should is, is that just like you get a D straight up resistance? Oh wait. Yeah, if you click Pisces Runestone, you can also click that little box that says Resistance. Okay. He also has it right here, so I'll link it as well. There we go. So yeah, you are currently maintaining concentration. And you are... You watch as the water shapes around Kai as he notices his friends in danger. And he basically poofs out. It's like the water collapses in on itself. And then right next to you, Bruce, like this rain cloud appears. And out of it just pours Kai. It's kind of like you watch as his figure fills up from the bottom to the top. Like a 3D uh, printer. Yeah, like a 3D <laughs> printer. And he looks at you and he makes it rain with his runestone, giving you resistance. Awesome. Uh, so and yeah, D four on a saving throw. Cool. Mhm. Mm I, I thought it did more than that, but yeah, that's that's resistance for you. So we're back Sick. to the top. Can't you, buddy? Uh, yeah, Something. Alonzo. And yeah, uh, you watch right. as Laszlo is behind you. He's catching up. Hey, what's happening? Oh, no big deal, buddy. We're just uh, an intense fight. All right, let's see. Same thing, I'll keep the mark up on it with the planar warrior. I'm gonna roll for the attack first and then roll for the damage on that. Ooh, is that a hit? That is Max definitely damage. a hit. Woo! Letting loose an arrow. I love the arrow sound. Beautiful, <laughs> Elliot, beautiful. Yeah. All right. And yeah, with planar warrior, you feel that vibration once again. And as you let loose the arrow, it basically ricochets off of the earth itself, getting even more momentum uh, before hey, yeah, it. impacting him in the chest. Love it. All right. Uh, is that your turn? That is my turn. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm just sticking back. I'm just plink, plink, plink. It's my job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And he takes the Love full it. damage because Planner Warrior uh, deals yes, all force damage. Force damage. Yeah. It's so good. And you watch as he's starting to crumble. Like, at, and by the way, Bruce, he had literally slammed you down. Like, let like his arm fall on top of you and it kind of like crushed your leg but you were able to wiggle out just in due time uh, but now he's starting to crumble what would you like to do? Alright, I would like to okay as an action I want to take the rest of my rope 
and just like instead of standing up just kind of like go through his legs and then up the wall and then across and i want to try to like get a bunch of rope around him okay like star wars at at exactly style? okay exactly so um i would like for you to make an acrobatics check and a sleight of hand check okay does it matter the order nope it does not okay sleight of hand acrobatics <laughs> yeah, and so as you pull out the rope, deftly, mind you, the rope, you throw it under his legs, and trying to do something fluid with the motion itself, you try to slide underneath him, but he brings his knee down on you, uh, kind of pinning you. You're currently, you're currently restrained. Fuck. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, you okay. restrained on shit. Then I will spend a key point for patience as a bonus uh for which uh let's see one consume usage ability key oh sorry patient defense oh patient defense so i have the dodge action so, so yes. instead of having instead of having advantage on attacks against you it's now regular yeah yep. <laughs> and so you're watching him like squirm underneath uh this column's <laughs> knee kind of like moving his head back and forth bobbing and weaving on the ground while half your body is currently being pinned uh the Virgoan golem <laughs> is just going to rev up a fist and then slam it down on you he does attack twice yep. oh 16, 17. Oh. Uh, they both hit. Wait, <laughs> oh. uh, wait. That's an wait. and then a death save. Oh. Wait one second. Uh, I didn't adjust his two hit. Uh, he has a plus eight, which is very unrealistic. Uh, I'm just looking at the dice. Uh, I think the second one would still hit. So you are currently unconscious, though. So you watch as he slams one fist down into you, and then the second one revs back. Unfortunately, uh... The second one nails you right in the noggin, and as his fist is pulling up, it's basically a crater and Looney Tunes, Bruce's head stuck in the center of it. Yeah, you're currently unconscious. Uh, sorry, boys. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's he's going to let his knee off of you. You're no longer being restrained, and of course... Oh, awesome! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it looks like Bruce about that. <laughs> uh, whoop. Oh. And yeah, your costume drops. All right, Salvatore, <laughs> what's up? Hmm. Well, so currently he doesn't think he's a threat anymore, right? He's he's <laughs> moving on to. Yeah, he's looking over at Kai, who kind of appeared out of nothingness. <laughs> hmm. Well, I guess I'll uh, I'll uh, ready another crossboat and fire, or crossbow okay. bolt. Middle a boat. You know, ready a boat. Nice. Nine misses, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, real nice. The nice miss. It was a distracting bolt. Um, hmm. I guess, um... Since I fired, can I still move? Since I haven't moved yet? You have not moved yet, and yes, you may. Yeah. I guess I'll, um... Move closer and try to... Get, garner attention mm -hmm. away from Kai and uh, Sal or not Sal or <laughs> Kai and Bruce. Okay. Uh, uh, how many? Was yeah, you can use your feline agility, by the way, if you'd like. Oh, okay. So, which so you're familiar with that? It's um, it should be in your bookmarked section. It's at the top of the second box. So, feline agility, as you're familiar with, will allow you to go double your movement speed, and it resets when you don't move for a turn. Oh, okay, and I didn't move the last turn? Okay. Yeah, well, you have it. So, basically, you're using oh. it, and then you'll have to rest for a turn, so to speak. Okay. I believe I was only 30. I was 30 away, so I should be able to just get right to him then. Yeah, you can be right up in him. Like, is there any other... You can be inside yeah, he, him. He is currently crumbling. You could stick his head in one of his orifices, but you do have your bonus <laughs> action. How would you like to use it? Crossbow is currently in hand and you're reloading it. The lightning is still arcing off of it. But should you take out your rapier, uh, the lightning will cease. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that uh, negative consequence and just pull out my rapier and ready it. 
and just start trying to like go. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, make an intimidation <laughs> check. Yeah, make an intimidation okay. check. Also, I will have you know that you can use your blood bindings on elementals because of your oh. subclass. Well, then I will do that. So yeah, um, you we'll mastering the elements within, you understand that blood isn't essential to make something, you know, move, to animate. And so you understand the, the inner <laughs> being of what, <laughs> you know, might be inside this Virgo and Golem. He'll make his strength check. And he rolls a oh. natural one. So he is currently yeah, being... Yeah, buddy. You bound. You watch as go. he revs up a punch to hit you, and you you kind of like. What is the gesture that you use to bind him? How about that? I uh, I like just stand completely still, face forward, knowing that it's not going to hit me, just <laughs> with full confidence in my ability. Very cool. Allow the fist just get to my face, and there's like a little breeze. Then, <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So his his fist comes so close, and it, it's just the momentum just ceases as soon as it's like an inch away from your from your face. Uh, but yeah, everything inside of him has just ceased. However, you watch as his next fist is coming in your direction. He is currently just being uh, his speed is reduced to zero, <laughs> so he's not actually stunned or anything like that. Uh, but yeah. Kai, what would you like to do? Um. So it looks like the golem is crumbling at this point. Yeah, is that in, what you see? In a way that means he's bloodied, so he's under half health. Okay, then I'm going to forget about Bruce for a second here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks, and, bro. Um, <laughs> I face the golem and I clap my hands in an act that Ooh. is. Let me find. I think it's not where I wanted it to be. Okay, casting. Thunderwave on the golem. Ooh, okay. And so this emanates from you, so it's basically, yes, like your hands, yeah. you clapped them, and they sent in his direction. So, I I would like... Uh, oh, never mind. <laughs> Everything okay? <laughs> it's it, it's going to hit me and... Or no, it's not me, oh. it's, uh, it's going to hit Bruce and Salvatore with that. Um, oh, or is, is he not in front of me? So I'm, it's, I'm intending to cast it to where it's only. I uh, see. Gold. Okay. And yes, I understand where Alan's come from. It does make sense that it would hit you. It's a cube originating from you. So I believe because it's sound based, you can't like focus it. It's not like a, a cone. A cone oh, would be focused. I thought, yeah. I thought, I, I legitimately thought it was that, like a cone pushing a wood. Completely understandable. I uh, see now the word yes. is cube, not cone. Your can character would understand this. Yeah, well... Yeah, so can I say I, I moved away, out of the way so I'm not also hitting his unconscious body? Sure, if you'd still like to use that spell, then yeah, you would just maneuver behind him, and we can say yes, that would definitely do so. Yeah, so that's if you'd I like, would like to do. Yeah, we'll put your character directly behind the golem, yeah, and for sure. So now he'll make that constitution saving throw. Got it. And he does succeed. Cool. So to make sure we didn't kill Bruce... Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you watch Bruce's, Bruce's head, his ears just explode, like ear, like blood curdling. <laughs> well, no, that didn't happen. Uh, instead, you maneuvered behind him, knowing full well his ears might explode. Uh, and yes, the thunder <laughs> erupts from behind him. You watch as his head, his full body, kind of like ur urches forward. And Salvatore, you do have to maneuver out of the fist that was currently positioned in front of your face, but the thunder damage cracking open the back of its skull uh, for half damage. Alright, that's your turn? Yep, that's my turn. Wow we And so Laszlo is going to uh, crawl up to the, the side. He being deft, uh, <laughs> <I th laughs> he's going to climb the five feet. No problem, he's a small goblin. I'm going to make him roll acrobatics just in case he's, he's a moron. No, he's not. So he does climb up to the top. He rummages through his pack just real quick, see what he has. Uh, he looks like he didn't really pick anything to help you. Bruce, outside of healing word. And so he's, yeah! uh, he's going to like... Hey, he, he does healing spell in the game. <laughs> yeah. He pulls out this vial, he uncorks it, and he kind of like looks for the trajectory to hit you seeing basically your body uh as well as your groans of pain kind of understanding where where you might be he arcs it uh kobe that's five points of healing damage 
<laughs> health, <laughs> healing health, not damage. Uh, it's fine. Like, I like imagine with the, with the way that you described it, with the fact that it's healing word, like when the bottle like bursts on him, like there's like a little like shout from the bottle, yeah. like "Hey!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a little yeah, literal healing word there. Uh, but yeah, it's like the reverse acid in a way. It's like the good acid, the LSD. <laughs> so Alonzo, it's your yeah, turn. Yeah. All right. Um, so I'm not I'm not taking like disadvantage or um, it doesn't have cover from my allies right now, does it? Like I'm like it's tall enough to where I'm like taking shots at it pretty clearly. Well, Salvatore um, did maneuver directly in front of him. However, he is tall enough okay. and you are up on the outside. So, yes, you can still hit him basically his upper okay. torso like his bust. I was just I was just going to move a little tiny bit. One, two, three. I was going to move like right there to try to get a little better angle or maybe like more like right there. Mm -hmm. Um Let's see. Okay. And then same thing. Longbow. Ah, oh, right. that's going to be a miss. That's oh, definitely well. a miss. Uh, also, I was just but, checking. But the blood binding does so. not restrain him. It just reduces his speed to zero. So you don't have advantage, unfortunately. I just wanted to double check. But just so you're aware, he can't move. <laughs> so he's kind of like, like Rock'em Sock'em style. Like this is all he can do at the moment. Uh, so basically, right. you let loose an arrow, having a very clean shot, and one of his fists just right as it arcs, your your low resounding vibration, uh, just definitely able to hit a mark that big, that large. Uh, just he got lucky and just wham the arrow out of the air just before it hit. For sure. That's my turn. All right, Bruce, you're up. All right, I will. Uh, I will pick myself up. Uh, let's take disengage as just a normal action because I'm out of key points. Okay. I just like to ask. This is the third turn, right? Yes. Cool. And then uh, I will make my way back. Just put some distance. Say, uh, it's just like another ten feet. Wait, why can't I move? I'm unable to move, but I'd like to move 10 feet oh, backwards. Um, let me just see if I can fix that. Oh, it's because I'm using the ruler tool. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, let's actually 15. That's 20, 20 feet. So you disengage as oh, an action, correct? Feet. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then do I have any bonus? I don't think I have any bonus actions now because I didn't attack. Okay. Uh, nope. That's it. All right. So Bruce basically peeling himself out of the ground. He's like, uh, how, what do you want to say to your allies that are now trying to help you? Get them, bullies. <laughs> Fair enough. So the Virgo, oh, unable to move, still being bound by the blood uh, that is preventing him from chasing you. He's going to slam two at Mr. Kitty Cat. Salvatore, 14. I believe that's a miss. And a 23. He's, roll he's rolling high on damage, and I even adjusted it. Uh, yeah. Going to make a constitution save as well. Love it. Salvatore. Uh, unfortunately, you get a full belly full of dirt as his fist kind of like shoves it just straight through the momentum. Like you, you inhale parts and pieces of him. Uh, so yeah, you're currently poisoned. That's what poison oh, does shoot. if you want to look at it. Rough. Yeah, disadvantage on attacks. Well, this is this is like a temporary poison. It's not like in your veins. It's more or less oh, like yeah. yeah. Well, just for everyone's reference. Uh, also, Salvatore. You do have your new reaction if you'd like to use it. I just want to use it for you, just so you're aware of it. Uh, parry. This is something I'm giving you uh, from Rune Vein. So, subclass, uh, if the attack misses by five or more points. So, uh, you would have used it if it missed by five or more points. <laughs> but, yeah, just read it through so you understand how it's used. It is now your turn. You are muted, muted my friend. Caleb. Well, it's like, <clears throat> <laughs> I uh, ooh, I just go ahead and I um, 
start, I, I smack him with my rape. Uh, also, does the blood curse of binding uh, make it to where he, his uh, attacks of opportunity? Can he still do those? Uh, yes. No, he cannot. That's what it said. Oh, wait. So let me look. Can I do reactions? Until the end of your next turn. So his turn just ended. Oh, wait. Until the end of your next turn? I would say wording rules is written. It would be the end of your turn. So, yes, you could totally get away. Okay. So, even though I am already took quite a bit of damage there, I'm still going to activate my Rite of Flame on my uh, rapier. Tell Molly Mock. <laughs> and then I'm going to slice and dice. Okay, so you do take four points of fire damage. As you, uh, how, how would you describe you basically hurting yourself to put it on your rapier? Well, I, I just basically run it across the wound that I was, just took from the golem. <laughs> oh, okay. Ooh. So it's like a flint stone. It's basically, it. yeah, as you rubbed it across the wound on the, the side of your arm, it mm. basically ignites, burning you, singeing the wound itself. However, you pull it out, and now your your blade is encapsulated in flame. And so go ahead and make your attack with disadvantage. Flash. Ooh. Uh, one more, then? Yep, one more. We'll take the lower of the two. Uh, which is uh, seven. Yeah, unfortunately, you go to pierce straight through, and you you actually watch as that part of him crumbled just before your blade impacted. Uh, yeah, that's a oh, swing man. and a miss, unfortunately. And then I do a deft feline uh, anime style backstep where I just get out of the range. <laughs> All right, anime style backstep. <laughs> uh, go ahead and make a Constitution check or save. I'm sorry to remove the poison. Oh, I thought I already did. To remove the poison. Oh, okay. Every turn, I'll let you do it. I like that. I like that. Unfortunately, no. You still you're coughing, but meanwhile, while acting cool, it's basically like backflip <coughs> and then just saddle away. Mm -mm. Kai, you I'm are. I'm trying. <laughs> you're maintaining concentration at the moment. What would you like to do? Oh, on resistance still. Yep, still on resistance. Oh, if he's still got it, I'll I'll hang on to that concentration just okay. in case he needs it. Um, and I will, um, spark a little flame in my hand and throw it at the golem. Nice. Nice. This ignites in your palm, and yeah, you chuck it straight in the back of his head. Are you trying to get his attention? How about that question? Um, no, just trying to do damage. Just trying to <laughs> finish him off. <laughs> okay. Yeah, a quick two in the back of the head. You, you acknowledge that he is almost down, but not quite. It'll probably take ten okay. more of those. Roughly, <laughs> I'm I'm just so sure that water um, is so much more powerful than Earth that I'm not uh, fully attuned to how serious the situation might be. Mm -hmm. Well, you're also using flame at that point, so it's almost as if you're watching the Pokemon kind of like weakness strength order <laughs> in real time. Who's you're understanding grass? it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, great. Is that your turn? That's my turn. All right. And by the way, you watch as the golem has now kind of like shifted out of this binding as uh, Salvatore is making his escape. The blood binding that he had used prior has finally worn off. Laszlo, however, is going to rev up his friars and he's going to unleash poison spray. <laughs> <laughs> it actually farts. Oh my yeah. sweet lord. Yeah. No, but, hey, Lice. Yeah. Uh, I'm so bad. <laughs> Uh, so, you watch as Laszlo kind of gets maybe like five, ten feet closer, uh, kind of like does his whole glove thing, and then shoves it straight in the golem's face, and is like, come on, baby, let's see some work. Uh, yeah, and unfortunately, it's immune to poison, being a golem. He's like, oh, shit! Oh, shit. And he's, he's gonna, <laughs> uh, take another five, ten st steps back to where, and he's also going to drop prone. He's gonna drop prone, so the, he can't be seen. Mm. Nice. Alonzo. Wait, is that a thing? Can... That is a thing. That is a yeah, thing. You can, you can drop range, down. Yeah, range classes. This is actually a battle tech. Is like you would stand up, use your abilities, you know, like fire an arrow or cast a spell, then right. drop prone. And it's disadvantage to well, attack you. Unless you're well, close. Because because my turn, I'll, I'll I'll take this moment to say that I want a repeating crossbow eventually, so I can do like a sniper rifle like style, like lay on the ground, just stay on the ground, just like ting 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 mm -hmm. with exactly. the crossbow. Anyways, um, so uh, I'm gonna stay where I am, take a shot at the golem, same thing, just rinse and repeat, mm -hmm. going right for the going right for the left eye. 
Nice. Nice. Yeah. And so, feeling the vibrations, you let loose an arrow after kind of like shivering, shimmering your foot in the dirt, and you watch as like a thin trail, almost like as if a wire was being removed from the ground itself, uh, just leads directly to the golem, and you pin it straight through the eye socket. And yeah, that's definitely a hit. Uh, and that's nice. your turn? You... Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prone. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds good. I think there's a, a condition for Alonso it. Alonso took some range. I was trying to, I was trying to see if I can, trying to see if I can figure That's out how to do it. But. but yeah, so it's basically, yeah, you look over at Laszlo, who is incorporating new battle techniques that he's never even considered in his life. Yeah, uh, all right. <laughs> but twelve force damage. This golem is going down by your hand, except he's still hey. alive. Bruce, what would you like to do? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I would like to uh, face. reach into my my belt, pull out a battering. I'm gonna toss it right at the fucking fucker. <laughs> Hit the weak spot. Hit it, ha! But no, unfortunately, the jagged edge of the pathway itself it kind of ricochets. Unfortunately, because it's like a boomerang almost, right? Or not. That's up to you. Uh, More like a throwing knife, mm, throwing knife, like I mean, vertical. The battering, it's the ring on there is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a flavored dagger. I guess I guess there <laughs> is a there is a returning feature, but daggers don't normally have that. So. I know, this is this is actually yeah. a fun question. How about for now, it's like a throwing knife, you're basically throwing it vertically, but you yeah. can buy literal yeah. boomerangs if you want, and we can flavor them. <laughs> Fuck yes. Okay. We'll do that. Love it. Alright. Yeah. So the Virgoan Golem watching Salvatore prance away, he's basically going to now chase after you, noticing he can move. He's still doing the whole rock'em sock'em robots. Uh, yeah, he's going to punch you straight in the gut as you're walking away. He's got to pummel you. Yeah, gut from the back. Oh, nice. 11 to miss. Oh, not so nice. 23 to hit. Well, and so, you. yeah, you are currently unconscious. Turns oh. around and wham! And now he's currently laughing, and it's just such a, a deep, visceral, kind of like guttural... <laughs> you can tell he's kind of stupid. Uh, Salvatore, you are no longer poisoned. I'll say, like, the poison itself left your gut as you were... All the air was sucked out of you. Uh, but you will need to make a death saving throw. Okay. Oh, no! Yeah, so if you click your character sheet, and you mouse over right in the middle of your character portrait, you can click that. Oh. There it is. Uh, with advantage? No. <laughs> oh, okay. I already knew. You succeed, though, so that's one of three. Kai, it's your turn. <sighs> okay. Um, I am going to use my wild shape to, once again, turn into a giant badger. <laughs> once again. Uh, so, yes. <laughs> Behind the golem, a vicious-looking <laughs> badger appears, haunching over to it. Uh, unfortunately, that was your action. However, yes, it uh, is. Kai, for your reference, on the uh, character section, basically where you would pop out, you know, the combat tracker, there's the party, you now have druid creatures. So if you click inside those, you'll be able to pull up their stat menu and adjust it as you see fit. And you drop concentration. Oh, awesome. Did, okay. Did you thematically make all my the fur of all my be creatures green to match my? Hair <laughs> yeah. Color? Yeah. Uh, we can also. I'll, I'll. I'll. I'll throw in some teal too. But yeah, green for hair, uh, teal for skin. I like so that. La nice. uh, Laszlo gets up from prone, looking at this golem. He's going to rummage through his pack. Ah, uh, well, uh, you know, I could try this one, and he's going to. All of his shit's poison, guys. He's useless. Except for his light crossbow. He's like, haha, surprise! Yeah! <laughs> and basically, the side of its head kind of goes through one ear and out the other. Uh, they are not magic bullets. The weapon itself is magic. I looked this up the other day. I was just double checking, though. Mm. But yeah, he sense, infused. Though. Yeah, he infused his crossbow. And so the bullets themselves, they appear magically, but they are not considered like a magic weapon. It's still, you know, a normal crossbow. Uh, however, yeah, that's still, you know, half damage. This golem is about to go down. Who wants to finish it off? Maybe it's Alonzo. Tell us how it happens. If you hit. <laughs> right, Please. probably. Let's hope, yeah. Hopefully, um, maybe. Let's see here. 
maybe hopefully we'll see uh i could kill salvatore at the same time but i'll pass uh, <laughs> let's see okay i was gonna have a hail of thorns but that wouldn't be a good idea um your sponsor it's, should be grateful <laughs> it's very close to being defeated we'll just say that much yeah no i i, I know it doesn't, it doesn't all right um yeah so i was gonna do the same thing just take a shot uh, but this time i'm gonna actually stay prone and can i I, I was just reading, attacking from prone gives disadvantage, and I think I had 13 misses anyways. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, but I was say just for flavor, like, staying prone, like, during the turn, like, as, as part of the flavor aspect of it, because it doesn't, you know, well, yeah, it does. I'm staying in the same place. It does miss. Also, for flavor, longbow, I would say you need to be standing. Like, you can't longbow on the ground. Okay, okay. Yeah, That's if you had a gun, if you had a gun, I'd be all about it, but yeah. That's true. I get you. Oh, and by the way, was that is that three quarters cover a homebrew thing, or do you find that somewhere? I uh, clicked the I wrong just... one. I clicked the wrong one. It's prone. So was, if you look, was... yeah. 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 No, I was just double checking because the prone actually does provide disadvantage again um, on attacks against us if if it's not melee. So range range attacks farther than five feet away are at disadvantage. Right. The three quarters cover is because I hit the wrong advantage. button. No, I know. I was just letting you know. Just I just yeah. was double checking because i'm curious at how, how it would actually play into you know yeah for sure this these are fun rules that i hope we all incorporate myself included with enemies but if you guys want to read uh the conditions they should be in the journal you can literally tab over to the journal and there is a section where you can look at all the different conditions also when i apply them to a target you'll notice that there's a little box oh, you that's can right. click and you can click that box sure. and it literally opens up the journal itself so if you have questions on nice. conditions even when they're not happening in combat you can totally tab over to the journal uh, great. Sweet. Bruce, it is your turn. All right. Uh, I will reach into the other side of my belt. I'm going to throw one more battering. Get okay. it, Bruce! Uh, you fling it, <laughs> and again, it just ricochets off of the side. No go, it sir. It hurts to throw, because I'm still so fucked up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he cracked something, but yeah. Uh, I'll just, just be disappointed and end my turn. <laughs> okay, so the golem itself, he's actually going to step purposely on Salvatore while making his way towards you, Bruce. So it's going to be one <laughs> attack uh, on you, <laughs> Salvatore, which I think is an auto crit. I could be wrong. If it hits, yeah, but it if is it an hits. advantage. Hell is it a, it's an yeah. advantage. Cause so, yeah. yeah, he's going to step on you. <laughs> Uh, as he's moving towards Bruce, and he's going to throw a slam at you. Come at me, motherfucker. And so he whales you straight into the side of the crevice. I hit the you, ground. Yep. You dropped. He, he's, this golem, he should have been finished already. Salvatore, your turn. You have to make a death save. <laughs> I don't want you to die. <laughs> Good luck. Oh my god. Wait, he has two? You succeeded. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. So he has. Yeah. So he has. He has what? Two, two deaths and two. one. Two and two. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. Two and two. Oh shit. Yep. Kai, it's your turn. Bang. Kill it. I am Bang making you guys. Risk. Yeah, I'm punishing you guys because you chose not to kill him for whatever reason. Perfect. I would like to attack the golem because I think it's an action <laughs> to change back, right? It is. Well, After I, I could be wrong. Okay. I'm not too familiar with that. I wouldn't be able to turn back and then help uh, Salvatore, would I? Uh, let's just link up Wild Shape. Wild. And then right. not consuming. So just to read through it for everybody who is curious. You'd stay in, revert to your normal form. Uh, you can revert by using a bonus action. So you can use it as a bonus action to come back to human form. Then you'll have your action. Okay. Just so you know, in the spirit of Salvatore, he would rather you kill the elemental. <laughs> most important thing. He doesn't know that though. He's a good, he's a good healer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I would, hate elementals. <laughs> I would, I would rather have wasted a turn and then heal you is what I would do. So I'm going to revert, um, back from, I can't do that. However, I do that. And then I will use my oh, yeah, sure. healer's kit to assure that I can stabilize you. Nice. Noise. I'm so happy you're here. 
<laughs> Am I still unconscious though? I uh, you are stabilized. Zero hit points, but yeah. But you are not making death saves. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so Laszlo, he's he's kind of like rummaging rummaging through his pack, very like panicked at this moment, uh, and he's just kind of like looking through everything he can do to help. There's really not much. He's out of spell slots. First and foremost, so he's going to, uh, he knows poison spray doesn't work. Uh, 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 and he sends out another crossbow bolt. Uh, ten misses, unfortunately. And then he'll just drop prone again, and he's, he starts sobbing. <laughs> Alonzo. <laughs> Kill this fucking dude. Alonzo, what would you like to do? Was by of creatures. Uh, no, I'm not muted. My thing's not working. Um, hmm. <laughs> Sick ASMR, dude. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I uh, well, no, because I can't draw my I can't draw my dagger and attack it in the same turn, or drop my bow or whatever. Um, I'm just gonna like just stay close right into its face. I'm not moving. I'm just been I've just been plinking arrows and it's just getting closer and closer. It's just like trudging forward. I'm just gonna do the same thing. Just try to just aim high. Nineteen hits. Oh yeah. <laughs> and luckily, Alonzo just picking himself up as he goes down to stomp on Bruce once again. He lets loose an arrow just in the nick of time, throwing it off guard, basically pinning it into the wall itself. The planner warrior letting out this resounding vibration as its entire body just begins to crumple on top of itself and it just falls apart. Nice <sighs> crumble. Oh. Nice sound effects, yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. Combat's over. Does it like does it like crumble into like a pile of like, rocks and stuff? Yeah, just like there, it was like a figure that looked humanoid, but now it's just a complete pile of rocks. All right. Um, how do we? So Salvatore will wake up soon, right? We don't have to necessarily do anything to wake him up. It's one uh, to four hours. Yeah. Salvatore will wake up soon. Oh yeah, he is stabilized. Uh, so. You guys can totally rest here if you like. Yeah, I'd say we set up camp around this, like... i say we set up camp right here in this little uh, little ravine. We gotta make sure we keep him safe and secure until we get him uh, resuscitated. I don't know how much we have in the ways of uh, healing right now. Um, oh, and this is uh, Laszlo speaking up. Let me see if I have a voice for Laszlo, actually. This might be fun. Oh, boy. You already doing a really good job with it. So, uh, over here, there's actually a little section oh, where, God. where we can all no. sit. Oh, God. I love it. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that. Yeah, that's Chris in a nutshell. Yeah, certainly. But no, he actually found, from his vantage point on that side of the ravine, a very safe-looking location, uh, which, by the way, you, our ranger, Alonzo, you can make a survival check with advantage because you'll be essentially, like, scoping it out and making sure it's a safe location. And yeah, it's five feet up. You pull both of the unconscious guys up there. Uh, with Kai's help, we can say he goes back into badger form just to use that extra strength of being a badger. Kind of like picking him up and <laughs> putting him on top. Kind of like how a forklift would do as a badger. <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah, no problems. You're able to... Oh, oh yeah, look, a, a, a similar cave with a similar dead manticore. How strange. <laughs> <laughs> All these caves look the same. Yeah. <laughs> But, but yeah, it's a very oh, safe location. Uh, make a perception check, those of you that are awake, uh, just overnight, because you'll be spending a long rest. Is that correct? Are we doing a long. Um, that, a yeah, long we rest? probably should do. Yeah, we should probably go ahead and do that. Uh, Milo, I hope you understand uh, that we almost lost one of our party here, and we need to recuperate, or we will not be in any shape to protect you okay. at all. No, I completely understand. Ah, and you can tell he's actually getting very faint from the the blood loss like he sees the golem itself no problem but then he looks over at salvatore who is currently like gushing blood from his wound um kai meanwhile kind of like banding bandaging him up and bruce himself like he's kind of like fixing a broken nose as he's coming back to consciousness <laughs> all right i'll take first watch i haven't uh haven't really taken many blows so i'll take first watch and uh before uh before we start our long rest i'm gonna cast protection from evil and good on myself uh for elementals Mm, okay. 
Ooh. Only, oh, it only lasts 10 minutes. That's not very long, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> you got a 10-minute right long now. rest. <laughs> right. Okay, uh, everyone make perception checks. Uh, the three of you that are oh, awake, yeah, basically you're other. taking turns uh, on, you know, watch duty. So to speak. Oh, I'm from an 8, or 20 to an 8. Hmm. There's your little campfire. Uh, yeah, I mean, Aww. luckily, uh, both Alonzo and... This is overnight? Yeah, this is overnight. So, basically, the sun was going down. You would have arrived in town at Hildenborough sunset, but this kind of, like, held you up. And so you spent the remainder of the evening just ensuring that campsite was safe, as well as, you know, keeping an eye out, especially for anyone passing through. But this is a very difficult terrain, pun intended, and so not a lot of people take this path, ah. this route. Uh, so everyone, go ahead and mark down uh, mm. your rations for the day, as well as water skin. Okay. Okay. And you do so hear, in ration. the faint distance, howling. But it's not the same... Of w actually, yes, it is a lot of the same wolf sounds where it's Arr! but you hear one that's very visceral. Who, uh, who took my rations? Somebody, somebody carried my rations for me. You have to mark them, mark them off for me, please. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. And you watch as Laszlo literally puts his hand inside of his bag of holding, does like a couple finger counts, hands you like a strip of beef jerky or whatever your choice mm -hmm. of rations might be. Yep. Hey, that's fine. Beef jerky sounds great to me, man. Okay, great. Well, with that, we'll take a quick break, then we'll come back. Uh, long resting? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're taking an in-person break, too, Which but long rest, yes. Half yes. half your hit dice. So one, if you had one left. Yeah, yeah, baby. Or actually, everybody gets one back, regardless of how many you had left. I got all level three. points. I'm not dead. Yeah, so right. it Maybe. should automate everything <laughs> for you. Could be wrong, but if you click your character, uh, double click character sheet, then the bottom left of your portrait, there's the take a rest button. If you click the long rest, it'll reset everything for you. Are we far from the crevasse? Uh, the crevasse? Uh, you're essentially like two, four right. hours away from Hildenborough. No, I mean from where we just had that encounter. I want to go get my batterings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can do oh, it sunrise and, and, or. And the manticore head, yeah. <laughs> yes, oh yeah, I shot six arrows so I get three back. Okay. Right. Oops, and I shot another one on accident. <laughs> That's okay, you we'll can adjust into it. the distance. <laughs> <All right. laughs> <Boom. laughs> but Bruce, roll a D2. One D2. One D2. You get them both. <laughs> and so yeah, you, you watch as a couple of them were just, or both of them were stuck into the wall, and so you peel them out and put them back in your pocket. You resharpen them over the campfire, but no problems. Beautiful. Oh. Um, you said we're going to take a break, right? Yeah, we're taking an in-person break, which, by the way, Alan, okay. what time do you need to get out? Because you have D&D as well. Uh, we we yeah. said six in the group chat, so. Yeah, we did say six. Let me see here. Yeah, yeah, well, this combat... <laughs> Okay, yeah, this combat was not planned for at all, and <laughs> I'm, I'm glad it was kind of, like, threatening, though. Very much so. It was definitely hey, it man. harder than the Manticore fight for some reason. <laughs> yeah, you, you have a lot prepared, and I just said, you know, you have a lot prepared, but you can just, you know, take your time and, you know, don't worry about getting all of it out in one day, you know? Oh, no, well, this was because I, I rolled think. a 20 on a random encounter. Oh, yeah, no, I know, no, I was just saying for the rest of it. By the way, guys, uh, I... Kind of made this while we were you guys were napping. I've been practicing <laughs> my alchemy. <laughs> and this is Laszlo. He's kind of like swirling this little elixir around in his hand. Does anybody want to taste test it? <laughs> hey, I'll give it a shot. Why not? Okay. Uh, you can totally drink it now, or if you want to hold on to it. That's cool. Yeah, I will wait. I will wait till later. Yeah, but taste te test test. Super cool. Oh, yep. <laughs> and he he watches oh, yeah, you yeah, pocket I'll, I'll, it. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll I'll dip my finger in it. Yeah, tastes swift. Okay, so basically, it the remainder of it is nine feet for one hour, <laughs> and you get an extra one foot per hour right now. <laughs> oh what from a drop? I was just trying to be flavorful for it for his yeah. Sake of I know, me too. That's fun. Uh, great. So, 
Your long rest has ended, morning has come, the crows are chirping, uh, <laughs> like crows do. Uh, but yeah, overall you're in like a deserted wasteland type environment. The uh, earth, you've noticed like the path itself has kind of shifted in a, in a way. So like the tectonic plates have moved maybe a couple feet, but you all were in a very safe location. Uh, whether or not that was luck, who knows. Wait, wow. like so from the whole ground, like over like overnight? Shifts. Yeah, overnight. Every day, this this plateau kind of like shifts. Oh shit! Man, oh. you think I'd uh, you think I'd know that living around here? But uh, I, I just plum forgot. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, overall, that, you you would know. <laughs> is that normal? Should we be like on on alert, or does that just happen every night? Uh, could I? Do I know if if we should be on alert? No, it just happens basically once a day. Uh, the Earth, you know, gradually over time, maybe like every other hour, it moves a couple inches. So it was a very noticeable difference waking up after a long rest and noticing that the path itself is not how you left it, so to speak. No, nah, man, we'll be all right. We uh, just uh, just not make sure we stay out of this ravine. Well, I, I I realize now that we probably shouldn't be traveling in the ravine in case the Earth shifts and crushes our bodies. It's a good call. Yeah, yeah. Let's travel. Let's travel on flat land. Oh, wow, right. yeah, uh, and this I'll is Milo's. Grab the manticore head. <laughs> okay, cool. Go ahead and make a athletics check, just to put it back on your shoulders. And so Milo, kind of like picking himself up and rolling up his bedspread, uh, he, you notice he hasn't really slept well. He's actually going to suffer a point of exhaustion because he didn't sleep well the night before either. Oh god. Okay. Well, as soon as we get into Hildenborough. I am going to rent a room. <laughs> you can tell he's very, um, <laughs> he's very put off. So you all might have some yeah. time to yourselves. Come and on, if, city boy. I'm not a big fan of the, uh, the rough life. Well, you know, I'm a scholar by trade, and you ruffians, and I say that as a compliment, I think you would <laughs> do better for maybe a day or so without uh, Milo, yours truly. I need to be on my best not only my best behavior, but also my best mind when we get to the tree. And as you know, we're getting closer. We're we're almost there, boys. I can feel it. And you, you notice him taking a sharp inhale, and then he... <laughs> yeah, almost there. I was going to... Uh, I'll, I'll put my hood down. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. It was, start, it was starting to hurt. Um, so, is the, is, the, is Hildenboro between us and the tree? Or do we have to pass the tree to get there? Oh yes, uh, just to recap our, uh, you know, adventure, we are going to Hildenboro because it's right outside of Terra Gaia. So the Gaia tree, it's one of, you know, four main seeds that came from our mother city called Gaia. And so, and this is all while you guys are moving, I'm assuming we're, you know, back on the road again. Uh, and so this is him, you know, woozy, woozily speaking, basically the mission you all were set out on. And he conve conveys that, uh, well, there's the aqua fur way that will be above us. As soon as we get to Hildenboro, it's right outside the, the town, the village. You'll be able to spot it. And then just beyond that, you'll see the cusp of Terra Gaia and its encapsulating forest. It's such a beautiful sight, and I haven't been since I was a little boy, so I'm kind of looking forward to it. Very good. Very good. Well, let's, uh, right. let's make our move then. Okay. So, the, yeah, the next two hours, like, you guys are all on edge, and the second you feel, like, the vibrations under your t under your feet, you kind of, like, jump to attention and look for what you would assume to be another golem. Uh, let's just say, for fun, Alonzo, make a perception check with advantage. Or survival. Your choice. Yeah, and you successfully maneuver around what appears to be an adult... Virgo and Golem. And this one is kind of like along the actual plane itself. He's kind of just shoveling through boulders and kind of like throwing them just to amuse itself. And you all duck, duck into uh, one of the crevines or the crevices and just narrowly avoid it. Crevines. Yeah. Love it. Crevines. <laughs> it's, yeah. Crevice ravine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you start to see forest. There's like the tree line finally comes into view, and you all, you know, let out a sigh of relief. Uh, and you basically feel grass under your toes once again. Oh, oh man, I missed the guys. dirt. 
<laughs> yeah, you can tell that there, a lot of these trees uh, have like cat claw marks in them. Hmm. I recognize these. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Salvatore does walk up to it, takes a turn. It's basically like a, a scratching po post. Yeah. Could I could I de uh, determine what that is with a survival or nature check? Sure, make a nature check. And Salvatore, you can make a nature check with advantage if you want to. Again, like if I wanted to do a nature check, do I right click on nature? If you hold down, it? yeah. If you hold Don't down shift. The and yes, the skills bar, you can also, if you have your token selected, it'll be at the top. And yeah, Dang. there's the advantage. Uh, Salvatore, this is just a natural inclination for you, especially noticing the, the marks on the tree. However, Alonzo, you get the feeling uh, that there are, you know, other travelers that come from Catan. And essentially, like, those that, you know, make the trek themselves, some being Tabaxi, they would take the time to enjoy nature when they finally you know, encompass it again. Having, you know, spent hours out in what appears to be a wasteland looking back. It's just like that earthquake-like terrain. So seeing trees again, gotcha. you can tell that some people had that that natural inclination to re-acclimate themselves to a sensible environment. Uh, so it was just like a, like a, just a, a jerk reaction to seeing nature again. They started scratching at it like crazy. Yeah. I can, yeah. I can tell, guys, this is a good tree. This is <laughs> like a cat, nice it's like catnip. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, is Kai doing anything, being a druid? Um, yeah, druid things. Oh, okay. I just walk <laughs> over and I, I, I graze my hand on the tree and keep going. Okay. Yeah, you, you notice oh, that... Uh, Ooh, wonder boy. <laughs> I'm getting frustrated because this, this manacore head is fucking heavy. And so yeah, oh my god. Yeah, you're, you're kind of just shifting your weight, kind of your shoulders. You can feel them popping out of their sockets. I'm like sweating. But, yeah, everybody's looking at a tree. Yeah. <laughs> Kai walks up to it, he touches it, and we'll just say for flavor, like you druid craft the, the claw marks, uh, and they just leave these scars, but they're not as deep as they were. It's kind of like leaving character, mm -hmm. and the tree itself kind of like appreciates uh, your touch. And so you guys make oh it to Hildenbro. It's it's maybe an, a ten minutes away from the tree line. Oh! And so it's it's a small village just north of a guy in tree. The town of Hildenbro is home to the Witch's Pastry, which is basically realm renowned for its uh, baked goods. Now it, they create like new recipes and fun magical like concoctions uh, through baked goods. And most villagers spend their days hunting or farming, those that are locals. And some just come to make the, their names for themselves through the Rangers Guild, or maybe they just come making the pilgrimage just to savor the magical pastries. Uh, but you can tell just from the, the aromas that hit you that this is something you don't want to miss out on. Mm. Excellent. I'm heading straight to the pastry shop. I want the pastries. <laughs> yeah, great. So... Uh, is there, just looking at this map, you're kind of aware of everything in town. So take a minute to look through it, uh, and just identify, like, what your character might want to do. Consider it like a mini downtime activity. Uh, meanwhile, Milo, he's also inclined to go to the bakery, but he's also kind of, like, heading, he's torn between going to the inn and the bakery, and in the bakery. Oh, I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing some, uh, some pastries and then heading to the Rangers Guild, just kind of checking in, seeing what's up. Uh, the were we taking the manacore head here or back to Deep Rock? You okay? Make a. This will be for Alonzo, Salvatore, and for Bruce. All of you make a history check. And this is relative. Wait, wait, I already remember. <laughs> Yours is with oh. advantage, Alonzo. Hey. Okay. So, luckily for you guys, Alonzo kind of like <laughs> announces to the party uh, that there is a bounty hunting guild and it is part of the Rangers Guild. So, you can totally mm -hmm. redeem the bounty gotcha. for the Manticore head here at the Rangers Guild. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, then I'll uh, that one. 
That's what I was doing uh, when I said I was going to the Rangers Guild. Totally. That's what I, I meant to do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will join you, my friend. All right. Uh, I got like a arm. I got an armful of like danishes and sweets and all sorts of things on my way. Just shoved my face full. Sure. Okay. How the guild? This question. You notice though? Uh, we'll just say everybody walked past the witch's pastry. So. There's definitely a long line to get in, but there are vendors outside the pastry uh, selling just generic stuff. However, you note that the line and people just kind of like talking amongst themselves. Oh, well, I can't wait to try her new, her new recipe. Oh, yes, it's like a chocolate, isn't it? And so they're all just talking about like the new one of the day. And if you choose to wait in line, you mm. can totally get that. Or if you just want, you know, the generic stuff, you can throw down nah. maybe like one or two silver. Yeah, I'll throw out two silver for a good good pile of pastries. Okay. All right. Pastry pile. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's if so. You, <laughs> if you do two gold, if you do two silver, you get a pile. <laughs> <laughs> Much more economical. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, as a as a tabaxi, uh, my natural inclination is to go to the uh, the tallest. Uh, building which is taller the clock tower or the hermit's tower so the hermit's tower is kind of run down it looks to be abandoned uh but the mm. clock tower it kind of just overlooks the city itself it would probably be the tallest for sure mm, i think i'm gonna i'm gonna opt for the hermit's tower because it's all run down okay milo and laszlo uh kind of agree that you guys should reserve an a in kind of room and they try to get you a good deal We'll say, just for the sake of it, Laszlo will make a check. Persuasion. See if he can get you guys a good deal. And he does. Uh, he'll take it out of his purse, too. So don't worry about that. And let's see. What's Kai doing? I don't think we found out what Kai's doing. Kai would um, have tried to go to the Witch's Pastry and then realized that I don't have any money. Um, <laughs> so then kind of wandering through the market, um, further realizing I have no money, I would end up at the Hermit's Tower and probably bump into Salvatore again. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, so Bruce and Alonzo, meanwhile, you guys are at the Rangers Guild, and Bruce, make me a perception check as you're dropping the manticore head basically on the counter. You notice a couple scribblings in the wall. Ooh. Not very well, though. <laughs> oh, no. uh, let's see. And unfortunately, that's all you get with your check, uh, unless you, you know, sacrifice some stealth in order to try and read it. But, uh, Alonzo, you note that there's a lot of familiar faces, maybe like 25%. There's a lot of new recruits, and you can tell that it's a lot. Make a perception check to see what else you can tell, but uh, overall, like, you can tell business as usual. Yeah, Alonzo, you kind of get the feeling that... Um, there's a lot of shady bandits that are kind of like taking up the space. Like individuals who are, you know, crooks, robbers, thieves. Uh, the Rangers Guild isn't what you re remember it to be. Because the mentor that you aspired to be, the your prior teacher, whom I'll let you name if you'd like. Castile. Castile? Can you type it in chat? Cast about Castile. Castile. So Castile, with that that funny kind of affection he threw into his voice when he like chided you sarcastically, it it just always brings back that that sense of uh, family that you had, just learning from individuals that had something to teach, and he was just one of those figures that really left an impression on you in your far travels. Uh, and Bruce, you can make one more perception check. Okay. But Alonzo, meanwhile, you are kind of bartering with, you know, a familiar face who hands over the proper amount for the uh, manticore head. Thank you, friend. Ah, oh, wow, I we've wanna... been... What's up? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to roleplay it. Uh, what's I, Bruce totally doing, though? Take the rope back. Hmm, okay. It, and yeah, you can take back the rope. However, it's five feet of it is pretty much out of use. So, okay. yeah. So you get five feet back. However, the manticore head—he, you watch as the uh, 
basically the bartender, if you want to call him that. He's definitely handing out <laughs> drinks to some of these uh, crooks. He walks over to the bounty board and he makes a show of ripping it off the uh, the wall itself. And then he has like a match. He takes his smoking pipe that he had conveniently in his mouth and he lights it, this uh, wanted poster from the bottom up and it uh, disintegrates in front of it the entire crew and you notice that a lot of people are starting to you know talk amongst themselves kind of like oh we better avoid them oh they there's some hot shots aren't they and you can tell it's like half and half like people <laughs> respect you and also are kind of a little bit jealous a little bit of both but um i'm yeah. like i'm super like yeah all right they, they respect us for sure they're definitely afraid of us i like that i'm definitely i'm, I'm yeah. into it i buy it 100 percent. yeah with your low charisma you know your your ego is getting the better view at the moment um, oh yeah for sure <laughs> So Bruce, however, uh, well, I would like to say, oh, sorry. No, you can say it. I'm actually gonna type something to Bruce. Uh, first, first thing I'm asking, uh, where can man buy some arrows around here? I'm uh, getting a little low. I'm kind of shake my quiver, and it's kind of loose arrows jingling around in there. Oh, he came to the right, right place, friend. And this is the barkeep. And he, you notice that he has kind of a, a lisp, but also when he says friend, it's almost as if like a business term. It's not exactly like he's he's not as friendly as you know. The Rangers right, Guild right. would be. You know that the Rangers Guild is, you know, the tide of nature. And so these are supposed to be individuals who are not only friendly to, like, other people, as they should. It just, they don't really have, like, a sense of uh, camaraderie. And so for James, just type this up just for fun. Okay. So you notice that there's symbols, and one happens to be a sun cresting behind a cliff. One happens to be an archway with kind of like a squiggly line above it. And then the last one uh, just has like a circle with like a line straight through the middle of it. Okay. Understood. Yep. And 50 gold pieces for are passed over to Alonzo. And Alonzo, with your overall... You know, like, been here, been around, your names being thrown about. They give you the arrows for free, so you can restock your quiver. Cool. Ooh, nice. Which I just found out I can only hold 20. <laughs> yeah, the quivers themselves are, yeah, it's only 20. No, I like that, though, because it really, I, that's the kind of roleplay I like, is, like, actually having to, like, think about what I'm using the stuff for. And plus, I, I hope to, at some point, get a, a two-handed weapon to, to bring into the fray. Just for funsies. Mm, the yeah. thing is getting crazy. Just <coughs> hit, hit, wink, wink, DM. <laughs> Quarter staff. No, I'm, like, no, I'm just kidding. No, I know. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Right, yeah. uh, <laughs> meanwhile, over at the Clock Tower Hermit's Tower, you note that there's just kind of like an ominous air about it. Go ahead and make a uh, Arcana or Ooh. Perception check. An ominous air about the Clock Tower. The clock tower or the, the watch tower? The hermit's tower and the clock tower are kind oh, of like, oh, oh, okay. they're right next to each other. <laughs> Salvatore, no, I don't you, know. Salvatore, you look up and you say, yes, that's a very nice tower. It's good. <laughs> I want to go very high. <laughs> yeah. There's something interesting about this tower. Yeah, Kai, I'll whisper you just because it's fun. Mm -mm. And you rolled pretty well. The blue crew. <laughs> the blue crew. <laughs> and it's definitely a familiar kind of t tinge to it. Um, but the the odor, the musk, the residue, if you will, is very low. As if it hasn't been inhabited. And you can tell that a lot of people avoid this neck of the woods, so to speak. Like, this isn't really the uh, hot spot of town like you noticed with the witch's pastry. Interesting. There's a familiar air about the tower um almost alchemical i want to say in nature i'm i think i'm gonna go ahead and take a venture salvatore does as well but just because he has n no idea if there's any kind of ominous nature to it at all <laughs> he just sort of just rolls right in this is where i'm going to go so you guys want to go into the tower me. Is yeah, that the idea? Completely, completely unfazed, Salvatore just like opens the door. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, there is a lock on the door. So you have thieves tools, I believe, Salvatore, because of your background. So go ahead and make a thieves tools check. Let me see. 
<laughs> you can also say that, oh, noticing there's a lock on there, you don't want to go in. Um, mm, I, I turn to Kai and I'm like, it looks pretty deserted. I don't <laughs> think anyone would care if we uh, took a quick peek. I don't think anybody's been here in a while. I think this is a... Uh, I like your style of water. <laughs> and I, uh... <laughs> oh, where's my thieves tools? Do you have these tools? I might... Uh, you have proficiency. I don't think you have them in your inventory. I'll just give them to you. We'll say Laszlo used his, uh... Long story short, as an alchemist, he can craft thieves tools that disappear. Any artisan tools. They disappear after long rest, so he just makes them every long rest. Which I think is cool. Mm -hmm. So now check your inventory. Just tab in and out of it, and they should appear Art for you. Artificers. Yeah, artificers. Cool. Very cool. Ooh, there we are. I and then you click it in really, chat. I don't really think they work because they're like half casters, but rangers are half casters, so you know, can't really mm -hmm. judge. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they're they're the half casters that use intellect, which is very interesting. I like it. R right. Right. And so, yeah, you pop open the lock. It's almost as if this is a new lock, and you're familiar with these locks. And so, as you all step inside, you notice that... Actually, make a perception check. Oh, where am I? Whoops. Oh, there. Yeah, scroll all the way down. Perception, you said? Yep, perception. Dang. Kai is always wide-eyed, and I am oh. eyes wide shut. <laughs> very, very perceptive. Yeah. You can tell that this has been used in the last week, more than likely. Oh. But there's a lot of alchemical supplies kind of loitering about, as well as, like, a mill. You can tell that someone has been grinding things. Uh, there's... This doesn't seem to be... very friendly in nature, but it also seems to be, like, it has that appearance that it's haunted or just like overall not in use because someone is hiding something like you okay. get that vibe can get that i vibe. can i cast detect magic well, yeah i i yeah. would like to i plan to Ooh, this is a fun little effect mm -hmm. and so you watch as kai kind of like waves his hand and basically everything in the room just lets out like a pulse as his hand like crosses over it and everything seems to give off some kind of conjuration there's definitely an air a tinge of necromancy at work oh i do not like this there's <laughs> I, I would say that to uh, Salvatore, saying hmm. it seems like this might be a necromancer's tower. I do not have interest in exploring any more than we if something, If somebody is doing something nefarious, it is our duty to investigate further in order to strike out the evil in their tower. Go ahead and investigate. Okay. You make a good point. <laughs> we don't. I don't know what they're talking about. There's nothing. <laughs> There's nothing here. Was that for me too? Yeah, that's also for I... you. Yep. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I I need to make a uh, private roll actually. I wonder if you can see the dice as I roll privately. Oh, oh shit. I don't think so. Okay. Guy. Guy. As we all know, evil rises to the top. <laughs> Thus, we must go further and deeper into the towers. I have your back. Hi. Very good. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I continue up the stairs. <laughs> okay. There is a I'm another off. locked door. Oh, and another thieves tool check. <laughs> Alan and James, Work can you see pick. the map? Just curious. No, no. Cannot. Alright, well, I'll drag you in so you can at least see it. But yeah, th it's just them there. Nice. <laughs> Heidi. <laughs> you guys are invisible. <laughs> uh, yeah, you successfully pop open this lock again. Do you destroy the locks? Or are you, like, how are you opening these locks? I'm a deaf practitioner. 
So uh, I uh, I simply open the lock <coughs> okay. and set them gently to the side, ready to lock them as we leave. Yeah. I also uh, like to imagine you're using your claws, or do you want to use the tools? And you you like your claws. No, I definitely. That's up to I you. Definitely like. I definitely like. <laughs> boink, and then like, yeah. <laughs> okay, I love it. So yeah, <laughs> Salvatore. He basically he pokes each jelly bean and a different shaped claw kind of appears <laughs> <laughs> and he, he essentially wiggles it in and it almost in an instant it clicks and he just takes it off and yeah you guys can step up on the next floor if you like oh it's not as interesting as i thought oh there's another level kai <laughs> you know what we must do <laughs> ascend the tower <laughs> <laughs> We've gone this far. There's no sense in going back two locks in. Okay. Uh, one thing, Kai, you notice as <laughs> Salvatore goes to go ahead and make another <laughs> Thieves' Tools check. Kai, you notice there's arrow slits uh, that look to be good for, like, peeking out of. You also notice that there's uh, definitely a tinge of necromancy. Uh, this appears to be kind of, like, a staging point or maybe somewhere that bodies were kept. Certainly in this room. But the next room... You are unable to oh. pick the lock. Oh. There's something good up here, Kai. These locks are more difficult. <laughs> there are two windows, as you can see on the map here, uh, both on the, the south side. Do I see anything interesting when I peek out the window? Yep, both of you make perception checks. Per perhaps we'll have a good roll for once. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, uh, you do kind of like deftly look outside as you hear footsteps approaching and you note that there are maybe one or two people heading your direction okay salvador there are people heading this direction what do we want to do uh i would say we should probably wait till they enter the uh, bottom layer and then we'll go out the window <laughs> sounds like a good plan Oh, is it, is it a sheer face at the outside, or is there, like, a little ledge? It's maybe a 12-foot drop. <laughs> Just straight How? down? There's no, like, edge yeah. or anything to step on? <laughs> nope, it's more How big less... is the window? Mm -hmm. Tell you what, make a uh, investigation check as Salvatore, only Salvatore makes this, as you're looking for ledges to, like, hip hop across. Hip. Okay. Uh, hip yeah. So, <laughs> here's, here's what I'm thinking. My lizard ability has a climbing speed uh, could i could i what? would that help me scale the wall without falling 12 feet to, to break our limbs yes i i would say so Ooh, okay and can i um are you a lizard right now i'm not a lizard currently <laughs> <laughs> and can i use my okay. um oh i was gonna say is can i use my feline agility and my pitons to uh climb the outside of the tower up to the next level <laughs> <laughs> oh i see um looking about it does look like there's a, a window yeah on the next floor up so in that case oh. you can make an acrobatics check yeah, for salvatore or are you leaving kai you're going or do you want to go up well if i see him going if i see him going up now i want to climb up but i'm going to turn <laughs> into a lizard yeah. okay so sick no, wait. oh yeah so that's, like... that's not that lizard that's the lizard. <laughs> so <A> big lizard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, Salvatore, just for the sake of it, yeah, I'm gonna move you into the room. Uh, both of you are making acrobatics checks. Oh, except Salvatore, you begin to fall <laughs> because one of the stones gives away. Uh, Kai, you need to make a, a acrobatics check though. Oh no. How big is this lizard? Can this lizard <laughs> reach out and grab me? <laughs> uh, do you attempt to, Kai? Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. large, so. Yeah, you can totally try and grab him. Uh, so, in that case, yeah, your strength is high enough, I would say. You need to open up the giant lizard character sheet. And let's say you're making a slight of hand check. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love this leftover version. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so basically, giant lizard Kai wraps his tail around the windowsill uh, like a good support beam, and like his little tiny lizard hands reaches out for Salvatore, who's now plummeting. Uh, Salvatore, being a cat, <laughs> you basically hit the ground on all fours, 
Uh, you do make a loud clink as your scale armor uh, has been rattling about. I would, I would, I would say, um, just real quick. I know, like, we already done done that, but like, would my feline agility have given me any kind of advantage? No. It, well, here we'll link it just so everybody can read it. As uh, it's more or less, it gives you like a dash for free. Oh, okay. Never yeah. mind. I thought it was like a all encompassing type of deal. Whatever you want it to be. All the yeah, right. Stuff. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to read it, you just click the word feline agility. Yeah. So it lets you move double your speed, which is fun. But yeah, it's it's something you have to use tactfully. <laughs> However, Salvatore, make a stealth check, which you automatically have disadvantage on because you're using scale mail. Okay. Oh, dang it. I got a shift. Wow. Oh, I already did it. But yeah, you oh. rolled pretty well because you have plus five. Uh, you're not only because as a tabaxi, you get like proficiency for free. You also have very good dexterity. So yeah, you you soften the blow as you clink. It's just a very sharp <laughs> clink as you sink into the ground on all fours, uh, and then you kind of prance away. We'll say you use your feline agility to literally dash behind one of the trees. <laughs> Kai, meanwhile, you are. I go like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what would you like to do, Kai? Off the fucking window. <laughs> um, am I just outside the window? Yeah, but you are able to climb it, no problems, because you already made that check. Okay. I um, Do I hear anything at the moment or see them coming in? Uh, I guess I'm on the backside of the of the tower, so I wouldn't see them coming in. Or... Your passive perception as a lizard's kind of low. Oh, I... Mm. Well, my, um, I thought you keep your intelligence scores when you wild shape. Maybe. I don't know. As in wild shape, he's, he's not, it's not the same as polymorph. He's, he's super, he's the same as he was. Before. So he does have high I mean, passive perception. Yes. I think it would be the same. He, so keep, I think he keeps his wisdom and intelligence and charisma, I think. He does not keep I his, he so. keeps his mental ability scores, not his physical ones. Correct. Should be. Okay, so you hear one footsteps, <laughs> one one footsteps, <laughs> one, one footsteps, footsteps. <laughs> one, set of footsteps. one set of footsteps. Yep. Uh, but you, at this point, you do understand that someone is in the building on the floor beneath you. Okay, I will climb up to the top to see and That's peek in through the window. That's my boy. <laughs> okay, you want to go to the very top? There's two more floors, so you're outside Ooh. of it looking in. I'll go to the very top. Okay. Oh, that's what Salvatore would uh, let you know. You spirit so, of Salvatore. <laughs> this is, this is, this is for Salvatore. To the top. Salvatore. So in front of you is a chest. Ooh, loot. Oh. Is does it is it locked? Yes. If I oh. <laughs> but um. it it's maybe like a, it's a locker. So you might be able to lift it if you really wanted to. Can I just throw it out the window? Salvatore's <laughs> waiting. Yeah, yeah. Salvatore's doing one of those gimme gimmies. Uh, okay, yeah, this locked chest in front of you. Make a athletics check. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, so this chest is now, and that's what it looks like. It's coated in what appears to be crystals. And so, basically, Ooh, with your chest, yeah, your lizard body, you're basically kind of like shoveling it with your your little tiny lizard arms. You're kind of like pushing it towards the window. Luckily, there there's like a very small lip, so you kind of with nice. your super intellect as being a druid and a lizard oh at the God. same time, <laughs> you're able to uh, shimmy it over the side and you push it over. It makes a loud crash. As it hits the ground. Salvatore be ready to drag it into the bushes? <laughs> yeah, we'll say with your feline agility, make a stealth check. This is with disadvantage. And Kai, what are you doing now that the chest is in Salvatore's hands? Um, hearing the loud crash, I'm going to try to scurry out the window. Okay. Oh, I thought I did disadvantage, but... I'm assuming the... F uh, Here we go. Patch <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> To get to the floor below me would be a locked door, I'm imagining. Yeah, there's a locked door behind you, like a trap door, which you you kind of, with your little yeah. lizard paws, like, slap it around. Uh, it doesn't open. <laughs> so you would have to go so out yeah, the window once just, again. 
I'm going to go out the window and uh, try to scale back down. Okay. Uh, so, meanwhile, Salvatore, the crash happening, uh, you rolled stealth check with disadvantage. And so the chest itself, while you can actually make an athletics check to see if you can carry it, seems pretty heavy. <laughs> Would we have come out of the guild and heard any of this at all yet? <laughs> oh, yes. And... You heard it. Okay. You definitely heard it. Both of you make perception okay. checks, by the way. Bruce and Alonzo. Okay. okay. See where it came from? Mm-hmm. Ah. Oh. Well, that's not bad. <laughs> yes. So, Bruce, your intuition kicking in. You direct Alonzo. And Alonzo basically picks up the trail, and you can feel... It's almost as if you have tremor sense, which is something I'd be interested in giving you as a ranger. But you can feel like these vibrations, and Bruce kind of like you can see it. You can you watch as your friend Salvatore literally picks up this crystal coated chest, then does like a quick spin and yeets it into the forest, and feline agility hey. bursts after it. Uh, and yeah, you watch as he he actually surpasses the chest itself <laughs> in its velocity, uh, and he, he's just doing these maneuvers where he's throwing it deeper and deeper into the woods. Uh, Kai, meanwhile, you're basically scaling down the wall. You know, like a lizard would. Uh, you make a stealth check too, guy. I love how we have a goblin in our party, but the druid is one of the more mischievous ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, water goes where water flows is what I always say. Mm. I fucking love it. <laughs> oh, but not too sneaky. Yeah. So, ooh, this might be fun. You hear a gunshot, Kai. That oh. is aimed at you. Basically, oh. outside of one of the windows, as you're climbing down the, the large uh, hermit's tower, a gunshot is sent in your direction at disadvantage. I'm assuming it does True. not hit me. Uh, apparently, I have to <laughs> give him ammunition. <laughs> Load him up. <laughs> Load him up. Uh, Load it up. There we go. Was that disadvantage? Uh, does 18 hit? Uh, and 18 hits. All right, so with it, disadvantage. Yeah, with disadvantage. So you look as a uh, a mysterious-looking man. He's wearing what appears to be a cowboy hat, and he's got like crocodile teeth that coat around the rim. Oh he, my god! You watch as he oh. peers out, and he notices a giant fucking lizard on the side of uh, <laughs> the tower. He pulls out his gun, like literally quick draw, and he blasts you for thirteen piercing damage. Ooh! Okay. Are you still a lizard? Back, back, right? I'm still a lizard. Oh, okay. You you have enough health. Uh, yeah, make an acrobatics check as you basically try to maneuver around the other side of the tower. My, by the way, Bruce and Alonzo, at this point, you're close enough to see a giant lizard as well as <laughs> following Salvatore, uh, line sight, into the woods. But yet, yeah, Kai, you are uh, okay. You are jettisoned off. I will say that you hit the ground with a loud thud. You're no longer a lizard. Okay. <laughs> I am a man. Uh, I'll, I'll run up to Salvatore. Like, what in the bloody fuck have you guys gotten into? What is happening? Evil rises to the top. We are trying to topple evil. That is what we're doing. <laughs> it looks like we're sneaking and thieving and breaking and entering. This is a necromancer's tower. This is a we... necromancer's tower. Kai, you are, not, you are not next to him, Kai. <laughs> oh, never mind. Yeah. Oh, we are sorry. trying to... Great, evil awesome. Has en... Yes, Perfect. evil has enveloped this town. We must stop it. <laughs> perfect. That was perfect. I'm just like sitting here, like going back and forth, like what? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Awesome. The evil necromancer. We're just gonna take his shit and open his chest, and there will be no consequence. Morally, what? yes. Open the chest. <laughs> I go to open the chest. It's locked. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm but to bust it open. Yeah, Kai, <laughs> you're basically trying to escape at this point, uh, but you look oh. up. Kind of like behind as you're maybe what like what are you trying to do? How about that question? Um, I'm assuming the the alligator cowboy is heading in my direction. <laughs> uh, yeah, the alligator cowboy has basically locked and loaded another shot, and he's readying it at you, and he shouts, "Boys!" Oh, oh fuck! Oh shit! 
We need to what go. Did you, yeah. What did you guys do? All right, and before we wrap it up for Evil tonight, rises to the <laughs> Kai, like, what is your agenda here? Are you vacating? Are you hiding behind tree? He can see you. You're a blue boy. Do, you, do I see my? Do I see my friends? Uh, make a perception check. This will be more fun. They see you because you <laughs> you hit the ground with a loud thud. He just fell out of a fucking. Oh. Yeah, you do not see Salvatore because you're basically picking yourself off the ground. <laughs> And you don't see Salvatore being as stealthy as he was. Also, Bruce and Alonzo, you guys are behind the tree. Uh, you you could totally stay stealth, but you see Kai. Yeah, I'd like to. Salvatore definitely um, rushes towards his partner in crime. I mean, Ooh. partner in justice. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, knowing that Salvatore is nearby and knowing his attitude, I'm going to brace for counter and get ready. Okay. Well, to that's where we're going to pick it up next game. turn. Next, uh, oh, next shit. time. Oh, shit. All right, all right. <laughs>